Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today I want to talk about creating a cable or rope geometry draping over your other geometry. So the general idea is I want to take a shape, like a, a round profile, and have it follow a path that drapes over or lays across other geometry. I don't want to spoil anything, but this is going to be a follow me video. Uh, we'll hop right in and take a look at it and how to do it right now. Okay, so I have this, uh, I don't know, wall, this shape. And what I want to do is I want to start with a, uh, like, a like I said, a cable. Like a one inch cable, it's going to come up and it's going to drape and go over this side, maybe drop, loop down, come back over, maybe come on this side, loop down again, come over and just hang over onto this side. So I want that all to be one piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to create geometry like that. Um, so I'm going to start, uh, maybe we'll start on this side and like I said, we'll start here. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to start here. I want to have it come up. I'm just drawing right on the face of this. This right here is grouped geometry. So I'm going to start right here, come up like this. I'm going to go across the top. I want to drop down. And then, like I said here, I want to have a loop. I want to loop back up. So I'll switch to my arc tool and I'll draw an arc like this. So when I draw an arc, I'm going to draw a full half circle arc. So I'm going to drop this down, boom, like that. There's a half circle. Now I'm going to take that and use scale to squish it back over like this. Um, very rarely, I mean, this, this is not going to look like a realistic looping cable. By doing this and squishing it back over, it looks like it's fairly realistic. It's gonna drop fairly close to straight and then switch and loop back up. And then I'll take that arc up to here. I don't have an exact number or percentage. I just like to squish it over until it looks like it's about right. Uh, it's gonna come this way. And then same thing on the front, I wanna do a much bigger arc like, like it's going to loop over like a lot bigger. So I'll do the same thing where I'll drop down to a half circle, let it snap at the half circle, and then take it and select it and use scale to squish it back together. I can even scale it this way too if I want to get a bigger loop, something like that. And then I'm going to draw a line straight back up. So this is actually an important step that I'm including here having this straight line on here. We'll see why this is important uh, when we come back and uh, talk about uh, curving this path back up over the top. And then just to finish it off, we'll go straight across here and then just let that hang down on that side. All right, so there's my path. That's what I want to have happen. Now, if I just come in, draw a circle on this path, do a follow me, I'm going to end up with a half circle, uh, basically half of this cord or whatever cord shape, cable shape uh, sticking out because it's gonna sit on top. So one of the things that I could do in theory is I could create a circle like this and then bring that circle out and have it follow me on the outside. That's an okay way to do it, but you'll definitely run into issues with that if I was to do it. Primarily in these corners right here, it's gonna get odd <laughs> when I try to wrap that around a 90 degree corner, specifically because as it comes up, it might be okay the way it laps over the corner here, but the outside of that corner is going to get that a potential 90 degree corner. It's going to be real sharp, not the ideal way to do it. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to take my path and make space for the cable. I need to arbitrarily, I need, or not arbitrary, I need to pick a size for this cable. So I'm going to say it's a one inch cable. That means I'm going to take my paths on the front, I'm going to move that out away from the face by half of the cable size. So if I'm doing a one inch cable, and I'm using the term cable for this, but this is really any geometry that I might have, cord, cable, wire, rope, whatever you want to call it, uh, this, this draping geometry. Same thing here, I need to push it up, so I'm going to go vertically by 0.5. So just a half inch on each side. And then same thing over here. I'm going to grab this and then all of these pieces. And I'm going to shift those over away from the face again, 0.5. All right, so that should give me some clearance. So that, see those, those cables, it's up away. So right now, if I was to drop a circle right here and have it follow, it, it would look pretty good on these loops right here. Uh, it would of course look okay going over the top. What wouldn't look okay right here is this because again, I have this 90 degree angle, so I wanna come in and give that 
uh, a little bit of a curve. I'm going to do that again based on my cable size. One inch means I'm going to do this, this arc at half of that. So I'm going to do a half inch here and then a half inch here. Just draw lines and then connect the two with a tangent uh, arc like that. Now, we've talked about that trick where you double click inside geometry to round off repeating geometry. Unfortunately, these are lines, so it can be very, very tricky to try to click to double click. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab this. I'm gonna option move. So I'm gonna copy it to here and then again to here. And then I'll take that one, stick it over right there. Use rotate to flip it around and then copy that from this one to this one to, oops, I didn't grab it by the point. I grabbed it near, but not, the, there we go. And then I can come in here and delete that extra geometry. So again, you gotta, it's hard to remember, but as you're drawing this, we're drawing the center of the cable that's going to be draped. So it needs to be away from the edge, uniformly on all the sides. That is looking great. So I have, you can see, I mean, I know it's the same because I put the numbers in, but I can see it's the same dimension, the same space, half that cable space all the way around. Awesome. Now I'm going to triple click. It's going to select that whole path. I'm sorry, I got it. I know, I don't want to get anybody dizzy, but I do have to keep flipping back and forth to show you both sides. Uh, and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say weld. Welding makes this one continuous curve. Um, it's right there. So now this is all one piece. That's, that does a couple things. One is it makes it easier to select. So I pick anywhere on it and the whole thing highlights. The other thing it's gonna do for me is when I come in here to actually do the follow me, it's not gonna break at any of the uh, edges it, where the curve connects to a straight line, for example, uh, that'll just go straight through. So let's do that. Let's put a circle on here. I wanna draw the circle flat to the ground and I wanna do a radius of a half inch like that. The other thing I want to do is I, I don't want to draw too many sides on this cable. Um, two reasons. One is it's already small. This is fairly small and if I, I end up with too many edges on this circle it's going to end, run under the small face problem where it's not going to be able to create all the geometry. But the other thing is this is so small, so much geometry, it's gonna make my model lighter if I model with like a 12-sided circle as opposed to a 24-sided circle. And really, when it's all smooth, you're not gonna see a difference between 24 sides and 12 sides. So right now, I'm actually drawing this circle uh, as 12 sides. So I'm gonna switch to 12, enter, and then I'll just draw that right across here. Again, half inch. All right, I'm ready to do it. So I have my curve selected. I can go to follow me and then click my 12 sided circle. And with that, there we go. So you can see because we did that half inch space, this face is running right up against the edge of the wall. And because we did the half inch space and then the half inch arc here, I'm coming to a perfect corner. It's right there, blending over perfectly uh, or bending over perfectly right on top of that wall. So. There you go, pretty simple. It is one of the most important parts when you do this is to make sure that path is set up beforehand. You can always come in and change geometry, right? So I could come in, grab all this. I could say scale and you know stretch it out so it's wider across here. The problem with changing it afterwards is as I do that, it's making my cable wider here than it is down here. See that? Because I got now I got a big chunky cable here and a thinner cable down here. I don't want to do that. If I want to make changes, then I want to change the path first. And then when I do that, the follow me ends up nice and uniform. And I get what looks like, said so just a cable, just kind of casually laying over the top of this little knee wall. So it's very possible you've never thought, how do I make a cable lap over this thing or lay on top of this thing? If you have, I guess I made this for you. If you haven't, there's a chance there's some other geometry you've tried to do with follow me. Um, 
I've run into a lot of spots where I've done a follow me and used that scale and ended up with distortion and kind of been like, oh, that's not ideally, it's not perfectly what I want. Uh, the thing to remember is to spend the time on the path before the follow me. Do your welds, check your clearance, half of your shape away from whatever it's supposed to intersect with or lay on, and then do the follow me afterwards. You're gonna get a much cleaner, better looking model and you're not gonna end up with that weird distortion. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.